Hey y'all, so I wanted to make a video about setting up your M1, M1 Pro, or M1 Max powered Max so that you can start web developing on these powerful machines. I'm going to go over a few apps that I use every day that are critical to my workflow, which I'll talk about first, then I'll talk about some OS configurations that really add to my productivity and quality of life. And there's one that I really wanna go over. It's very simple, but it's a total game changer in terms of productivity. Be sure to stick around for this pro tip at the end of the video. I'm Taylor and I'm a full stack engineer. If you're new here, welcome. Okay, let's talk about the apps on my M1 Mac. The web browser is arguably the most important tool you're gonna to use as a web developer. Using the right browser for you is going to allow you to make changes quickly, solve problems faster, and simulate running your app on a variety of devices. So far, I've found that Chrome is the best all-around browser for all of these scenarios. The Chrome extension ecosystem is rich with useful tools. Some of my favorites are Color Picker iDrop, JSON Formatter, and React DevTools. Those are just to name a few. There's also an extension that I found the other day, which is called CheckAlly.css, which is created by Jack Domnail. When you enable it on your website, it will make recommendations on your website in real time about which aspects of it are Ally compliant by either displaying a yellow warning when there's something you might want to fix or a red warning when there's something you really should fix. Here's Jack's Twitter, which I highly recommend you follow. Chrome also has a very nice set of debugging tools right out of the box, which the Chrome team is constantly improving and updating with new features. One of the most useful features they added somewhat recently is better visualization tools around pages built using CSS Grid. I find this very useful for quickly setting up a page using Grid and getting it to feel just right, just the way I want it. Another useful feature that I'm using all the time is the device simulator in the DevTools, which you can use to preview the responsiveness of your app on smaller devices like 720p laptops, phones, or tablets. The more devices your website supports, the greater audience your website is going to get. Next up, we have the code editor, which is going to be one of the most important tools that you use as a developer, obviously. There are a number of options out there, including local editors like VS Code or IntelliJ, web-based editors like StackBlitz, and various no-code solutions, which really I've never explored too in depth, so your mileage may vary with those. Personally, I find that IntelliJ works best for me since it has plenty of features out of the box and it supports Spring and JavaScript languages very well, which is the main two languages that I'm using to develop web apps in. You might be asking, well, why not VS Code? Well, I like VS Code a lot, but I still find that IntelliJ offers a better overall experience for my workflow. It's got a really sophisticated indexing system which allows you to trace your code via declarations very easily. It's got a built-in terminal, plenty of plugins, some themes here and there. You can move around and customize your window workflows just the way you want them. And it has some of the best Git features that I've ever seen on any editor. To get the most out of IntelliJ, you're gonna have to fork up some cash though because the full featured editor isn't free, but it is well worth it in my opinion. The Git features are truly next level, and it's what I probably like most about IntelliJ. The JetBrains team have done an amazing job at making a UI Git experience that is really productive and really works for you. It's especially useful when you have merge conflicts as it compares two files side by side and offers you context arrows to place code where it needs to go, either from your branch or the branch that you're trying to pull in. This saves you a lot of time and avoids potentially breaking changes that you might accidentally merge in or unintentionally merge in. And let me tell you, that is never a fun experience. If you haven't given it a try, I highly recommend IntelliJ or WebStorm, which is a kind of light version of IntelliJ, but it's geared more towards JavaScript. Both have trial versions that allow you to try the full software for about 30 days, I think. And I just encourage you to challenge yourself to give it a try for a week and let me know what you think of it in the comments below. Okay, the next tool that I use is essential for testing endpoints in backend work, and that's Postman. Postman is a REST tool, and it's gonna allow you to test CRUD 
endpoints, create, read, update, delete, and view the resulting responses. Postman has some amazing features like being able to set up different environment variables for each environment you might have, like dev cert prod, or even different kinds of applications. Having the ability to write JavaScript that injects tokens like JWATs into your environment variables. And Postman also allows you to save all your endpoints to the cloud, granted you have a Postman account. I found that Postman saves me so much time simply because I don't have to rely on a UI to call endpoints. Therefore, I can write those first and test all that functionality before writing any UI code. Postman is also free, which is always a benefit when finding great tools. As web developers, we work with databases all the time, right? And having a good tool to view that data inside your database is a really essential productivity tool. The best tool that I've found for managing SQL databases is called dBeaver. dBeaver is a free tool and it allows you to connect to multiple databases of varying types, which you can view everything about that database all right within the application. You can view high-level ER diagrams. dBeaver also has good tools for allowing you to write and execute custom scripts inside because it has its own built-in SQL editor. The ER diagrams are really amazing when it comes to viewing all or parts of how your database interfaces with every single table in your database. dBeaver is a, another free tool but if you want to connect to your MongoDB database, then you will have to upgrade to the paid version of the app. For MongoDB databases, I recommend you use MongoDB's Compass. It's a really solid tool for managing your MongoDB schemas, and it's a very similar tool to dBeaver. Okay, the last tool that I want to talk about is Notion, and it's really a game changer for organizing your workflow. I like to set up a Kanban board for all my coding projects and then that way I can move them to various states like to do and progress are done. This way I can have a track of a high level overview of my entire projects. And for each project I break them down into smaller tasks which also have their own states that I can move through the various to do completion or done or whatever states that I really want to make for it. This allows me to break down big problems into bite-sized chunks and that is really essential for actually making progress on your apps and like getting a solution out there quickly and actually being able to finish projects. It's, it's a big deal and Notion has been really helpful in kind of structuring that and keeping everything organized. Um, if you plan on storing a lot of images on your Kanban board, then you might want to consider upgrading to a free tier. Notion is a free app, but if you want more storage, then you'll have to upgrade to a free tier. Okay, now that I've covered some great tools, I want to cover some changes that I make to macOS whenever I'm configuring the computer for a web dev environment. One of the best features of these new Macs is the battery life that you get over other laptops. I do like having a precise monitoring over my battery in the uh, in the toolbar or the menu bar. So I always go into the dock and menu bar settings. I navigate down to the battery section and enable the show percentage option. Now I can monitor my battery life more closely and I have a precise number when I plug it in, which I usually plug it in around 20%. Moving on from the battery, I wanna talk about the settings when the laptop is plugged into a power source. Sometimes being a web developer means waiting long periods of time for batch jobs to finish or code deployments to complete or automated test suites to complete their run. You wouldn't want these getting interrupted due to your laptop going to sleep. So to remedy that, I always go into the battery settings, navigate to power adapter settings, and adjust it so that it's prevent Mac from sleeping when the display is off. I just give that a check. That way I don't have to have any anxiety about my laptop sleeping and canceling anything important. Moving on to the trackpad settings, I like to enable the tap to click Sometimes I don't have access to a mouse and we'll work with it just the trackpad a lot. Enabling tap to click just saves a little bit of fatigue on my fingers. After that, still in the trackpad settings, I'll increase the trackpad speed just a little bit. I do find the default speed is a bit too slow for my taste, but experiment with this one and figure out what speed will work for you. Now, for the keyboard settings. And this is the area where I wanted to talk about this feature that is really going to change your productivity when using your Mac. 
So first, I increased the key repeat setting to its fastest setting. Then I increased the delay to the second shortest setting. The reason I do this is I find that the when hitting the backspace key on the keyboard, it's just a little bit too slow for my taste when deleting characters. So I like to increase it to make that experience faster. I disable all the predictive text. I just find that I can get in the way more than it can help. It can also try to autocorrect your code, which is not fun and quite annoying. Okay, so now for the really big setting. I open up the modifier key and I swap the caps lock for the command key. Now this sounds crazy, right? Especially if you're used to programming on something like a Windows computer. I've always found that the placement of the command key by default would feel uncomfortable in my hand. It was, it was kind of an awkward position to like do like this motion or whatever. By having the command key as the caps locks key, I can place my pinky on the key and then have easy access to any other key that I might need on the keyboard. If I need spotlight search, copy, paste, cut, opening a new tab, closing a new tab, all these operations are now well within my reach and it's a more comfortable experience in my opinion. So I recommend you give that a try if that's something that sounds interesting or if you experience the same thing with the default command key. Let me know what you think of this setting and put a comment down below. All right guys, that's it. Those are my tools and settings that I use when setting up a M1 computer, in this case, the M1 Max for web development. I hope you found these useful and I hope you learned something new. If you found this video helpful, please leave a like or leave a comment down below letting me know which part was most helpful to you. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.